uh, one of the early thoughts was the critique of notice and choice. Uh, clearly, everybody on every side of the privacy spectrum has issues with notice and choice, and do they work, and are they ignored, and you know, do they just uh, um, uh, provide a, a shifting uh, of, of focus but uh, aren't really meaningful. But other privacy critics in reacting to the paper or the concept have said, uh, are you proposing to eliminate individual you know, participation here? Am I going to therefore get uh, marketing be without being able to decide? I mean, where and how are we minimizing or taking off the table, or, or are we disrespecting to some degree a core concept of users having an, an important measure of control? So would you g give us a reaction to that? And Yeah, let, let, it's one of the themes that, uh, that uh, in thinking about what would be interesting to advance this is I'll call it messaging, which I, I will touch on that. But let me first give you a little bit more of a background on how we got to this stage, and then finish with um, something around risk, although different than perhaps what uh, Richard talked to you yesterday, which I think is relevant to this audience. So Fred talked about 18 months ago, uh, the seven of us locking ourselves in a very, very, very nice um, hotel uh, to think about what this new world would look like. But the journey really started uh, two and a half years prior, prior to that, where uh, as part of uh, kind of our looking at the world, our being Microsoft's view of the world, we said, look, all the things that Fred uh, talked about um, are likely to come in play and what implications would that have. And that started us on a journey that we called a, a global dialogue, which um, involved over 100 uh, privacy experts, ranging from academics to uh, advocacy organizations to policymakers to regulations in uh, all five different parts of the world. Uh, we chose not to go to Antarctica as one continent um, for perhaps obvious reasons, but touched on just about every other part of the world. There were then a, a global summit that we hosted on uh, Microsoft campus uh, involving some 70 people. And I, I would say that the, the conclusion was that from those uh, experts that um, you know the current model that we have have grown up with uh, and built with some very, very noble uh, right purposes was not working today and certainly was not working tomorrow. And um, I, I come from kind of an operational background. By extension, if the process is broken, one must find a new process. So in other words, the conclusion was almost uh, no one uh, felt that uh, we didn't need some change. The question was to what change, which is where we started doing uh, much of this work uh, that, that Fred talked about. This got to, I'll call it the key theme of messaging, um, because what's uh, interesting about change is that despite, I think, people intellectually, perhaps even emotionally recognizing that we need to evolve to something better or we could do better, to what is a, is a paradigm that is um, uncomfortable for, for many of us. Uh, in other words, we don't know what the answer is, but discovery of that answer can create some um, some emotions about it. So what we learned uh, out of this is that uh, some messaging challenges of with uh, Fred suggesting perhaps a shift more to a use of information, some people interpret it as, well, that means consent's gone. Or another one, if uh, we're going to have more accountability on data stewards, the many of us in this room, well, that means all the other fair information principles are gone. Well, of course, none of that um, is accurate, but it's a, just this messaging challenge. And this got me thinking about, uh, I'll call it the risk side of things, too. For this audience, this is actually the first time that um, this group um, has actually exposed this work to a group of privacy professionals. And so when I think about risk, um, Fred said something that is, uh, uh, for, for us, uh, as I'll call it, uh, um, data custodian stewards of organizations, he's really saying this model requires us to assume more responsibility. And intellectually, that sounds good. Uh, intellectually, I suspect there will be people in our organizations that would say, hold on a sec. Consent may not work, but after all, that's how we offload most of our risk onto our unsuspecting customers. Well, OK, so you can argue about that. It says that's just a bad deal for consumers, therefore should be changed. But I'm going to present an alternative view to you uh, all as, I'll call it that custodians, the organizations to think that we can maintain the status quo also has extreme risk. Because I think what we will see is as this model increasingly comes under stress, the natural cycle of public policy will take place and we will see reactions to that breakdown of that. And I'm not sure that we'll all be happy with what those outcomes are. 
So I think it behooves us to think very differently, pragmatically. I think it behooves us to think differently about our roles, to accept more responsibility for that, to unburden the consumer. But to Jules' final question, this does not mean uh, uh, that the individual should not participate uh, in, in, a, in a strange sort of way. If we find the right solution, we'll in effect make consent more meaningful because it will apply to places where it really is important as opposed to the grad bag, as, as uh, Christopher said, uh, if you read this um, treaty longer than Hamlet uh, and click, I agree, um, everything's just fine. And that's just probably not sustainable. So we all have a responsibility to think about a different model. So the critique that, well, I'll be getting all these marketing messages because someone has decided that that's low risk, I'm still likely to have options to Absolutely. make decisions. Um, uh, but the more nuanced public good type decisions or um, this is a use for analytics which a user really maybe isn't in a good position to be uh, seriously debating and considering we need the policymakers, the uh, thoughtful stewards to say, you know what, this isn't a time to request uh, a consent. It won't ever be meaningful. We need uh, responsible thinkers to say this is something that should always be happening. It's in the benefit of the individual, benefit of society. Uh, here, this is a discretionary thing. Somebody should uh, be asked to tick a box Look, about. Is that a fair? For all good intentions, we collectively, those of us here, those of us there, those of us on both sides of the Atlantic, have created the Hamlet style <laughs> privacy notices. We've said, Wow, individual needs to be in control. The way they get control is to be more transparent. Uh, that means that it's 80,000 words and everything's just fine. And we've sleepwalked a little bit into um, thinking that uh, even, for example, obvious uses of information, I'm going to do, provide you with my address because I'd actually like the package that I ordered from Amazon to be delivered, which is part of that 80,000 treaty-like notice, uh, is, is part of the whole deal. And we should think about that and say, well, yeah, that maybe should be discoverable, but it shouldn't be part of the click I agree notion that covers every single terms of use, including uh, parts of information use that might really apply to uh, fundamental human rights. We've got to, I think, just think differently about, I'll call it mixing up the, uh, the pieces so that it provides a more effective model, but it absolutely still means that the individual um, has some control, some choice, uh, just the model where, it's, where it really does apply.